The center of our galaxy is a raging dynamo of tremendous power. And it's natural to wonder what could provide such awesome energies. Black holes. When a large star is nearing the end of its life, it can collapse under the pressure of its own gravity and become a black hole. These weird bodies are called black holes because they swallow everything that comes close enough, even light itself. The process, though, is anything but dark and serene. This is a photo taken by the Chandra telescope showing stars near the center of our galaxy radiating fiercely as they speed towards their death under the pool of black holes. They are traveling at millions of miles per hour and are being torn apart in the process. There are millions of black holes in our galaxy, and the biggest of them all is the one at the center. This monster has the mass of three million suns. Its appetite is ferocious, and it swallows everything in its neighborhood, even other black holes. Probably every large galaxy in the universe has a monster black hole at its center. Until recently, we thought that galaxies were the largest structures in the universe, and that they were pretty evenly distributed. But now we recognize that galaxies join together to form clusters, superclusters, walls, and filament shapes. The Milky Way is a member of a group of 20 or 30 galaxies in star clusters called our local group. The largest galaxy in this group is our sister spiral galaxy, Andromeda. Larger groups called superclusters may contain thousands of galaxies. The nearest of these is the Virgo supercluster, towards which we are being inexorably drawn. Can you feel the tug? This is a map of all the clusters and superclusters within a billion light years of Earth. Represented here are some 200 million galaxies, and this is still less than one thousandth of the known universe. From small beginnings, the universe has prospered. Four point six billion years ago, our solar system started to form about two thirds of the way out on one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way. Our sun and its planets condensed under the pressure of gravity until the sun was hot and dense enough to light its own nuclear fires. The inner planets are small and rocky with heavy elements, while the outer planets tend to be large gas giants. Our sun is an average-sized star, but it dwarfs the planets. Earth is the tiny planet third from the left. While it would take light itself over six hours to travel from the sun to Pluto, let's take a quick tour of our solar system. Planet Mercury is the closest to the Sun, followed next by our sister planet, Venus. Our own Earth is third, our neighbor, Mars, Jupiter is the first and largest of the gas giants, followed by Saturn with its glorious rings. Uranus rolls on its side. Neptune is a blue world. Followed last by ex-planet Pluto. And even traveling at the speed of light, it would take us more than four years to get to the nearest star. All very interesting, Chaucer. But what has all that to do with the counterclockwise organization? You know, that's a story that goes back to the beginning of time. Time had a beginning? Deja vu all over again. Now I think you guys are pulling my leg. That's another story that goes back to the beginning of time. 
<laughs> Enough. I am out of here. <laughs>